You get your vitamin D enough from the sun, they say. But is that true? Well, yes, it is. But if you stay until the end, I'll show you why you need to learn and listen in to this video. Because it's not the whole truth. I learned that the hard way because my parents are from the Mediterranean and I live in Scandinavia, more precisely in Stockholm, Sweden, which is very high up in the Northern Hemisphere. What I noticed was that I was healthy and, and all good when I was younger, but after I turned 40, something started to happen to me. I started to get a cough, a dry cough, every winter for two months or more. Since I started training, I really needed those two months every winter to train, but I simply couldn't. There's two scary things about vitamin D and sun exposure. Sun exposure gives you skin cancer, they say. And looking at the official data from Sweden, in 2004, something really happens in Sweden and it accelerates uh, when it comes to skin cancer and malignant melanoma. There might be different reasons why that is, but I really wanted to know why vitamin D uh, is so essential, so I started researching it a bit more. I went to a private nurse that told me that since I'm not from Sweden, I need at least three generations worth of Swedish genetics to survive here without supplementation. So I started supplementing with the normal ranges of vitamin D that the government is saying is enough. Strangely enough, when I tested my blood, it was just above adequate 77 nanomoles per liter in December in 2019, but my dry cough didn't go away. So we started checking with spirometry through the doctor if there was something wrong with my lungs. We did x-rays, there was nothing wrong with my lungs. So they just left me there without understanding why I had a dry cough and was sick for over two months every winter. It wasn't until I started looking at Dr. John Campbell on YouTube uh, through the uh, pandemic that I really realized that there is something going on here that nobody's telling me, not even the doctors. Now, I'm not giving you any medical advice in this video, but I'm going to show you how I sort of not got the right answers from the medical community and the doctors really don't know anything about this. So I started doing my research myself since I don't trust people on YouTube. I actually read the scientific reports. So what I found, the first one I read was that when they did studies in Italy on soccer players, they found that they had 38% of the soccer players were too low in vitamin D. We're talking about Italy here. Italy has sun, they're at the Mediterranean, I'm not, and they have 38% of soccer players being too low in vitamin D. And that's a problem when you are doing exercise because vitamin D is connected and associated with testosterone. It produces more testosterone if you have the right levels of vitamin D, as I have now. So it's very important. And if you don't have testosterone and you injure yourself, you will actually take longer to heal. I found six studies, more or less, about soccer players around the Mediterranean, which had too low levels of vitamin D, which is strange that you have that sort of low levels in, uh, in Italy and Greece, but that's not it. I also found a ton of research about Africans being too low in vitamin D and the problems associated with that. I will link to all these scientific reports down below in the description so you can verify it yourself and make up your own mind about it. I decided I needed to check my vitamin D levels again and saw that they had dropped. And then I asked the doctor, can we test again in January? And she said, no, we don't have proactive medication uh, in Sweden you need to pay for that yourself. If you're dying, you're welcome to the Swedish medical system and we'll prevent you from, try and prevent you from dying. Well, thank you for that news. At least I know what I'm getting paid for, what I get from my taxes, which is, we'll save you if you're dying, but that's basically it. So I decided I'll put a year into this and investigate how my blood looks when it comes to vitamin D. So I checked my blood every second 
month. Starting in, in January 2023, I had a lower vitamin D count than I had in December 2022, which scared me a lot. So I went up to 2000 international units. And after testing myself in March, it had dropped even further. I got really scared that something is either wrong with the pills or they're bad quality or there's something else. So I upped it up to 5,000 international units per day, which is 125 milligrams per day. In June 27th, I had 171 nanomoles per liter, which was great. And my testosterone also went up, which is super great being at my age. I also decided then that let's see what the Swedish sun produces with my skin during an ordinary summer and me laying in the sun sunbathing. Through research that you will find down below in the description, you'll see that scientists say that you get about 25,000 international units of vitamin D in your, in your system if you lay in the sun until you just get burnt. Now that's a different type of vitamin D than you get from pills because D3 is converted in your liver to something called uh, calciferol. And you can't buy that in, in Europe except in Spain and in Italy. That goes directly into your blood and fixes your blood, your testosterone levels and your immune system. But it's not allowed to be sold in Europe except in Spain and Italy. So what happened? Well, I didn't take any pills between 27th of June and 27th of July of last year, 2023. And lo and behold, I dropped 21 nanomoles per liter with the Swedish sun. I was then 50 years old. So that tells me something's up with my skin and my body, it, or it might be also my age. Anyhow, going further and listening more to John Campbell, he showed me a research paper done by a hospital done over seven years when they gave both the staff and their patients between five five thousand units and fifty thousand units like and fifty thousand is quite a lot <laughs> uh, it's a huge amount of vitamin d and they did this voluntarily so what were their findings nobody overdosed nobody died uh, some had over 323 nanomoles per liter in their blood. Nothing happened. Many of these uh, ailments like psoriasis and other ailments from lack of vitamin D actually became better. And they didn't see any side effects, which is a good thing because that sort of relaxes it a bit that you don't necessarily overdose from vitamin D. and. Um, get sick. Here's the uh, great part about understanding and reading research. Back in 1980s, we already knew through the science because they actually took skin samples of kids and older people. So they had 8 year olds, 18 year olds, 77 year olds, and I think it was 82 year olds. So if you measure your vitamin D levels at eight years old and say that that's optimal, that's 100%, when you're 18, your skin has already lost 20% of its capacity to produce vitamin D. At 77 years of age, your skin produces 37% of vitamin D. That explains why I need to supplement with so, so high doses. My mother does so as well, and we have her levels up quite well at my levels now as well. So that is a good thing. But here's the funny part. The medical industry has known this since 1985. But all I hear is don't overdose on vitamin D. You will die an excruciating death. Now, we don't know if that's going to happen to anyone that takes too much, but at least I know my levels because I went and checked them. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.